everyone, welcome to another video. Um, so today I spent a bit of time recording multiple videos to be released in the coming weeks because I'll be getting busy. Tomorrow I'll be going to Korea. I'm in Tokyo right now. And then when I come back, I have to fly back to Canada, then go to New York and all that stuff. So by the time this video is released, I should be in Korea. Anyway, what you just saw in the intro playing segment was me trying out a Howard Roberts Stringphonic guitar. Howard Roberts style Stringphonic uh, archtop guitar. Uh, really, really impressive guitar. I was just in Osaka and I went to the Stringphonic headquarters and they asked me to shoot a little promo video. And I liked the guitar so much and I used it for the <laughs> intro playing segment of this video because I was too lazy to do something new. <laughs> And for those of you who are conspiracy theorists, you're probably wondering, are masks still a thing in uh, Asia? They are. I don't enjoy wearing masks, but I'm a guest in this country and I do as people do here. Um, one of you messaged me and you got so angry at me that you blamed Joe Biden for the fact that people are wearing masks in, in Japan. So I recommend in the next American elections that you vote Joe Biden out so that people will stop wearing masks in Japan. I think uh, what I just said was necessary because you cannot imagine how many messages I get on social media when I post pictures of me wearing masks in Asia. You know, when I, when I go to a new country, a new, a new culture, I try to adapt. I don't try to force my culture onto others. Okay, so with that out of the way, one more thing. Um, these online videos are my only source of income these days. And I would really appreciate it if you could like, you could share, you could comment. And if you want to financially support me, you can buy something on SoundSlice or DC Music School. you find all the links in the description box. On SoundSlice, I have like bebop vocabulary courses. I have uh, gypsy jazz courses. I have harmony courses on DC Music School. They have all sorts of goodies. And um, there we go. So today I want to talk about ear training. What that actually means because you might have heard a lot of jazz musicians say that they play by ear or rather they play what they they hear and that's uh it's something it's a statement that i very much agree with but there are some nuances that are worth unpacking and this video might be a little bit uh, philosophical or even meta but i want to make it practical I want you to get something out of it so that you can think a little bit about how to maximize your uh, practice efficiency so you don't waste time. So there's lots to unpack here. I'm going to talk about relative pitch, perfect pitch, theory, knowledge, whatever you want to call it, and all that fun stuff. So some of you have watched me transcribe in real time. And some people who have perfect pitch have even watched me transcribe in real time and they've They've admitted that they were completely impressed at how fast I could transcribe. And it's almost, and some people have even said that I have perfect pitch, which I do not have. And why is it that I can transcribe so incredibly fast? Um, well, actually, it's nuanced. It depends what I'm transcribing. If I'm transcribing something that I'm very familiar with, that's when I'm fastest. And there are certain things that I'm extremely fast at, namely gypsy jazz or contemporary gypsy jazz guitar. Um, I spent a huge chunk of my youth listening to Jimmy Rosenberg, Stokola Rosenberg and all those players. And uh, at one point, like just with my guitar, I lifted all their lines, uh, practically everything. When I hear them play, I can in my head already visualize exactly where it's being played. Yeah, one of you even made the comments like, how do you even know where it's being played? How can you just like determine the fingerings like automatically? It's because I watch so many videos or I've been with them. I watch them play and I notice where they were playing. So that when I hear like Stokola Rosenberg or Jimmy Rosenberg play with my eyes closed and they play a line, I know exactly where it's being played. I know what the line is. And... What makes it even easier for me is if I actually know the song. So if they're playing all of me and first chord in C and they play a line, well, I know exactly which notes they are because I know the first chord is C, the second chord is E7, the next chord is A7, etc. So that's how I'm able to transcribe extremely fast. If I were to transcribe something 
that I'm less familiar with, I'm still fast, but I make make little judgment mistakes. And that's where I rely, rely a lot more on my relative pitch than anything else. And I am admittedly slower at that. But when it comes to gypsy jazz players that, I, that I'm familiar with, songs that I'm familiar with, it almost seems as if I had perfect pitch. So that's a huge, huge clue about the importance of uh, knowledge, of experience. By the way, you can check out the Jimmy Rosenberg transcriptions on SoundSlice. I'm the official transcriber for the Hot Club Records catalog, so check it out. So that's the main thing I want to emphasize here. It's less about pure air training than it is about a combination of relative pitch and knowledge. Knowledge is so important. What is knowledge? I mean, is it theory? I guess it's semantics, but for me, knowledge is also muscle memory. Like me having worked out all these like Stok Stokolo and uh, Jimmy Rosenberg lines and other players is me copying them, spending hours reproducing the same lines until I was so familiar with it on, the in on my instrument that I know exactly where to play it, how it's played, how it's articulated. I'm not even thinking in terms of notes or even in terms of like relative pace, like it's going up a major second, it's going to the minor third. No, it's just like if I play something like this, I don't have a pick, but I'm not even thinking that it's harmonic minor. It's just, I just know. And I talked about this in a previous video. It's the same thing. When you speak a language, you're not choosing your words. You're not choosing the grammar points you're going to use. It just comes out because you have experience. And this, I think, is extremely important. All my favorite players who are quote-unquote ear-based players, playing what they hear, have a lot of muscle memory. They have a lot of knowledge there. And it translates to your ears. And the best way I can describe this is uh, the stairway to heaven syndrome. I just came up with this term. But uh, I think the vast majority of guitar players have probably tried to play the intro segment of Stairway to Heaven at some point in their life. Here, if, I, if you just close your eyes and if I were to play this. Alright, because the mo most of you, and then I'll continue. This is actually not such an easy passage in terms of ear training. It's got like a minor triad going to a minor major seven. What? Then it has, wait, how does it go? Yeah, then you have a minor major seven chord with a ninth. Then goes minor seven. Then after this D triad. It's quite complex in terms of uh, harmonic and melodic material. But think about it, because most of you probably have played this before. You don't even have to think about which key it's in. You just know right away it's an A minor. You just put your fingers automatically. Or same thing with... You don't have to know what power chord it is. I don't even know. Yeah, it's a B flat power chord, but you just know. This is the knowledge, this is the experience that I'm talking about. That, that's very, very important. And it's the exact same thing in jazz. You learn a lot of vocabulary and then you play it a lot, a lot so that it's automatic in your fingers. And that when you hear it, you automatically know what it is. And if you, like I said when, earlier, when I, was when I transcribe a song that I know, I know all of me starts on C, if it's in the key of C, then E7, A7, et cetera, et cetera. So if you're playing, all of me and you hear a familiar phrase over like the C major chord let's say okay first chord C if I were to hear this what was that automatically I, I would know where it's played without knowing that it's starting on this which is the ninth you know I'm not thinking of here I just know And I can hear it in my head. So it's extremely important that you spend a lot of time with your instrument, listening to music, and figuring out as much material as you can by ear, uh, preferably. And then it's important that you relate what you play 
to the harmonies of the song. And that's how you develop this knowledge and you're training your ear at the same time. Because, okay, some, a lot of jazz musicians, oh, I just play what I hear. So ear training is very important. Yes. But then some students, they take that to mean, okay, I better start training my ear. So they, they get this application on their phone, this app that tests intervals. All right, what is this interval? Major seven. Oh, what is uh, this? It's a triad. Okay, I'm not saying that ear training, this kind of ear training is a waste of time, but in my opinion, if, you're, if you want to be efficient, your time would be better spent transcribing practical things, things that you're going to use, things that are in a context. Because if you just hear, what interval is that? Major seven. Yeah, but where do you hear that? You need a context. It would be better if you have, for example, um, someone playing a C chord and then you have this this phrase that would make more sense than to just doing something like completely out of context and unfortunately there is no magic formula for this this is something that you'll have to do every day for as much as you can um, and you can even do this without your instrument in your hand. Nowadays with our phone, we have access to like apps where they have a keyboard. So when you hear something, you can imagine in your head and then try to see if you can figure out on the keyboard. And the fewer mistakes that you make, that means the clearer things are in your head. Or even right now, if I were to ask you to play like a, a song, like a holiday song, like a Christmas song or something in the key of G, Try to do that without making a mistake. Take any any stupid song. And um, that's the kind of ear training that I advocate for. Because I've worked with people who have perfect pitch. Quite a lot of people who have perfect pitch, but who cannot improvise to save their lives. So is perfect pitch useful or not? Um, it depends. In the beginning stages, if you don't have any knowledge, the perfect pitch is only useful in so far as that it will allow you to recognize notes faster, transcribe faster. But eventually you need knowledge to make sense of, to take advantage, full advantage of your perfect pitch. Because I played with people who have perfect pitch, we're playing songs, difficult songs, well not difficult, but songs with changes that are non-diatonic. And they don't know what to play. They in fact, they're relying on scale patterns that they've memorized or arpeggio patterns. So they're relying actually on a kind of knowledge, but a knowledge that is not attached to the ear or to any kind of uh, understanding of the music. So basically, they're completely missing the changes. So perfect pitch, I guess, maybe a dumb analogy, but if it's, it's, let's say you're, we're all colorblind, but some people are able to see color. Okay, so they're blessed with the ability to see color and they know that they have access to blue, red, green, yellow, and I ask them to draw the sun, and they draw the sun in green. Makes no sense, right? Because they don't know that the sun is actually supposed to be yellow. This is the knowledge that you need. So you need to listen to a lot of music, preferably the music that you yourself are trying to play, figure out what your favorite players are doing, figure out the notes, and figure out the notes in relation to the harmony so that you understand or just like just understand why those notes are being played because i've also met classical musicians who did a lot of transcribing um classical musicians like i met this violinist who had like a collection of grappelli solos like, transcribed yet could not play improvise to save his life and it was funny he would play the grappelli solos but if let's say he made a mistake he wouldn't be able to catch up or something i wouldn't be able to tell him hey let's start from the second a like he has no idea he had no idea of what that meant he would have to start from like measure one like from the beginning that means he has absolutely no idea what he's playing he has great ears enough good enough ears to figure out each individual notes but he has absolute 
absolutely no idea what those notes really mean. Another example is, let's say you're into languages and you're playing or like music in a foreign language, like Japanese, J-pop or something. And you manage to learn the lyrics to a song, you know, phonetically copy what you heard or you read the, 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 the text. You get the pronunciation more or less right, but you don't understand what the words mean. And that's a no-no if you're trying to train your ears in order to become a better improviser. You want to understand everything that you, that you hear. It's the same thing for me with Japanese, actually. Like uh, many of you know that I'm studying Japanese. This month is my fourth year anniversary of studying Japanese quite intensively. Before I studied Japanese, just for fun, like I had memorized this uh, famous speech by Son Goku in Dragon Ball Z before he turned into a Super Saiyan. And I remember how hard it was for me to memorize the text because I was just copying sounds without understanding the grammar, the meaning behind the words. And I looked at the text again just like recently and I'm, well, I didn't memorize it, but I was like, I can, I, I read it very fluently very easily and I understood every single word the grammar point and it was easy for me to just repeat it I don't remember it by heart it was in my short-term memory and that's what I mean you need to absolutely understand everything understanding it not necessarily at the theoretical level like oh this is a flat 13 brother but you just know it you just know what it means you just it's a feeling I think the theory is more mainly useful for describing, for communication. So you can tell someone like, hey, just play the, the fifth. So yeah, okay, the fifth of a G is D. But if I were to, let's say we had a D chord, a uh, G chord, and I just played this note. Um, I'll, I'll give you a better example. I'll actually give you a better example. Often at jam sessions, um, I used to play gigs with this sax player and she would always end with a major song, I'll end her the song on the ninth, like this, so we're in the key of G. She would always end it there, but and I would all, at the end always play like a chord that matched that, so I would just do like... And whenever I heard the ninth, in my head I wasn't thinking, she's playing the ninth. I just knew it was the ninth. I just knew it was this note because it came from experience, from all the years uh, spent with the instrument in my hand, listening to music, figuring things out, so much to the point that it's just a part of me. Again, that same language analogy, you're not thinking about the meaning of the words, which words to use, which grammar points, which conjugation, things just come out. When someone says, are you hungry? You're not thinking, okay, what does hungry mean? Oh, it means that I want to eat some. No, you're just hungry. Automatically, it's, you know, what it means without having to think about what it means. I hope that makes sense to you. So there we go. Perfect pitch in the beginning might not be so useful. But then, once you have this knowledge and this uh, solid foundation, I wish I had perfect pitch because I've some of my favorite musicians who have a high level of knowledge and perfect pitch are able to do the most incredible thing ever. Like they learn so fast, it's incredible. And they can react to everything they hear um, and be able to play something coherent. It's, it's very, very impressive. So to quickly sum things up, um, main point is transcribing is worthless unless you try to understand what you are transcribing. So it's better to figure things out by ear and then try to use it right away and to deconstruct what you, you've you transcribed into little chunks and relate it to, well, not to the harmony or make sense of what you are playing to understand why those notes are being played with that rhythm, with that articulation, with those notes, etc. Now the next point is about playing what you hear. What exactly does that mean? Um, I think it's a spectrum. It's multi-layered. I think there are definitely players who can maybe 99 to 100% play what they hear. 
those would tend to be mainly perfect pitch players, but not necessarily just perfect players, p perfect pitch players. There are some relative pitch players who have trained your, their ears so, so, so much that they make very few mistakes in terms of playing what they hear. But I don't have any proof for this, but I think statistics, statistically, most of us are doing, uh, most, most musicians are doing something closer to what I actually do, which I'm going to explain to you right now. So on good days, I do hear things, especially on songs that I really like, when, when I feel really inspired, I hear things. And the things that I hear are things that I have heard before and that I've absorbed into my, my, my ears, my brain, whatever, and that I understand so much that I can deconstruct them to their most basic cellular level and that I can make little chunks with them. So that if I had a C chord, let's say I start on this note, on the G, so with this, I'm not even thinking about fifth going to the sixth or whatever. It's just melodies that I hear and micro melodies, like really cell, melodic cells combined to make something. And then the next chord is going to E7, like all of me. So that's what's mainly happening to me when I'm feeling super, super, super inspired. I hear a lot of things ahead of time, but sometimes I don't really hear anything because I'm not inspired or my ears, because I don't have perfect pitch, are not functioning the way I hoped they would. In which case, I rely on my knowledge, theory, or just like muscle memory. I know that over a C chord, this note will work. And then I know this will work. And from playing a few notes, it automatically immediately inspires me. So it's kind of in the moment. So I, this is something I just heard. I just did this. Let's just say I just did this by theory. I just filled the holes going to the third. But then I, I play this. I hear something. And let's say I don't hear anything now. But we have to get to the E7 chord. And I know that I can get to E7. Now we're in E. But now I hear something. Went to A minor. We're supposed to go to A7, but it's okay. <laughs> so it's this thing. It's um, multiple layers working together, helping me out. Knowledge, ear, knowledge, ear. Sometimes, hopefully, in ideal situ situations, more ear than knowledge. But it's that kind of thing. And I think that's how a lot, a lot of players really improvise. That's why I have so much respect for singers who actually scat and don't scat like a fake scat. Fate lines. When you can scat real lines, that's the ultimate proof that you're doing the vast majority of what you do by ear. Like 100% by ear, really. But still, the ear is always informed by knowledge. Because a singer who is scatting over uh, a song with relatively difficult changes, if they didn't know the chords, there would be no way that they could target specific notes like right on the beat you have to have knowledge you have to know what you're singing over speaking of singing it's something that i didn't really really practice so i might be a little bit out of tune the reason why i don't practice this is because i was not blessed with a voice um i don't have a wide range and so the few times that i have practiced singing it's it always got very annoying because i'd start playing things and i started hearing things but then my voice couldn't reach those notes and it like you have to change octaves with your voice and it was very very annoying so i guess my thing is in 100 percent year and i've just said i've admitted it but i would dare say that for many people it's the same thing because i've met also i'm sure you guys have seen 
videos of pianists or guitar players um, playing really, really well, but also like scatting. But when you listen to their voice, they're just like singing completely random pitches. So for me, that's also proof that it's not for them. It's not 100% ear either. It's a combination of ear and knowledge. There was a time I was with a, a student of mine back when I used to teach homestay uh, things, which I hope to resume in Japan one day. But um, he was working on Nuash, um, the solo, the, the recording from Django. And I think together we were looking at the, the, the recording and he wanted to figure out the chords that Django was playing during the melody. And automatically, I figure out all, as if I had perfect pitch, because I know Nuash so well, and I know a lot of Django's tricks, mannerisms, that um, in the, the B part, I think Django does something like, something like that. I don't remember what chords it, but I just, I heard it, and I reproduced it as if I had perfect pitch. So again, knowledge, 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 muscle memory. This playing what you hear thing as uh, generally refers to a specific style of improvisation that is quote unquote more melodic, melody based rather than pattern based. Pattern based, for example, like. Like, this is just not a melodic thing. Although there are some people who have trained their relative pitch. To such a level that they can nail this by ear, they can actually sing that, but that such people are rather rare. One way to describe playing what I hear with this knowledge thing is, it's not necessarily that I hear it in terms of very accurate pitch, but it's something that I expect to hear. So let's say I can't sing this line, I don't know what I'm going to play, but like, but because I have this muscle memory thing, I know where to put my fingers, and these are the notes that I expect to hear that I know it's gonna sound good. Man, I've I'm not a good singer. So I hope this was kind of useful. I know it was very philosophical. My suggestion is to spend a lot of time learning actual music, absorbing actual music. And one thing that would really help you as far as jazz guitar or jazz music is concerned is learning songs. Learn a lot of songs. Learn the melodies. Learn the, the chords behind the songs. The more songs you know, the more melodies you know, and the more how you, you can relate the melodies to the, the chords, the better your knowledge will get. And if there's something that I've, that I've noticed that all the great jazz musicians have in common is that they know quite a lot of songs. How many songs should you know? I can't really say. It's not that you have to know every single standard out there. That's not true. I can make a little video about that another time, like how many songs you know, because there's some like snobs out there that say like they they look down on you, it's like, oh, you don't know that song, and that's super lame. No, believe it or not, you know I, a lot of you guys know that I've worked with a lot of famous players, and you'd be surprised that a lot of players that I know more songs than a lot of these players, but these guys are way better than musicians than me. I can make a video about that. Why am I not as good as them if I know more songs than they, than they know? Um, there's a reason for that. But no, um, you should definitely learn X number of songs, X number of melodies, and try to understand them. And once you have all that down, it, it, it just like, it trains your ears, your body to be more spontaneous in, when it comes to like playing what you hear. I was at a gypsy camp some years ago before COVID. Remember those days? Um, I was playing bass with a bunch of uh, musicians and they were playing all these old songs from Austria, Germany, like uh, waltzes or foxtrots, like these, this dance music that Django grew up playing, like uh, 
the gypsy music before gypsy jazz in that area. And those guys were so impressed by me because I played every single song perfectly on the bass. And they're like, man, this guy knows every single song. No, actually, I didn't know any, any one of those songs at all. But that music, I'm so familiar with uh, the sounds of that music. And I've learned so many songs that I can predict where certain songs, where certain chord progressions will go. If I hear something like this, there's a high possibility the next thing would be things like that. If I hear something like this, there's a high possibility that's going to go three ways. It's going to go here, or, or. And since I'm playing bass, I don't even have to worry about the chord quality. So I was in real time playing all these songs perfectly. Making, well, not perfectly, but very, very few mistakes. Like, and if I did make, quote unquote, a mistake, I, I heard it immediately and I was able to change it to the right note. So it sounded as if I knew all the songs that we were playing. We must have played like dozens of songs. And they're like, man, this guy knows every song. Play with us, play with us. And that's what I mean when I say it's important to absorb the music. Um, I rarely need charts. I just have to look, or if I look at a chart, I just look at it once and I have it memorized because I translate the charts into the visual aspect of the charts. I can feel it in my body. I know that where it's going. But sometimes when charts are written wrong, I can also feel it. I can hear it. So... It's not as difficult as it seems, but the trick is, the thing is, there's no shortcut. You just have to actually sit down and do the work. It's not about memorizing a few formulas, a few scales. It's about sitting down and just start playing songs, learning songs, and trying to understand what you're playing. And that's it. Eventually, the more you do this, the faster, the more fluent you get at it. And eventually, um, you, uh, you, you get to that level.